Cheeks, Render Wars is back on track after life got in the way. I welcome you to Series 1, Episode 4, the J-Man Edition. What? Well, that is sensational. I'm the J-Man, by the way. Just let it tumble out like circus freaks, man. Right on, brother, I hear you. Man, I hear you. I'm the J-Man. And congratulations to Hoggers, the young buck boy wonder, for being triumphant in Episode 3. He secured his place in the final, giving us all a masterclass in CGI with a fine selection from his portfolio. A well-deserved victory for Hoggers, taking home 64% of the voting. And for the benefit of anyone new to the channel, Render Wars is a CGI contest open to anyone with a ponch on for showing off your finest render work, uh, craving for one's ego to be stroked, shall we say, and a chance to make it into the final to win a 3D connection a Space Mouse. Full contest details and guidelines for entry can be found in the video linked in the description. And the first J-Man to jump in with today's jolly jackpot of juicy joy is Jacobus J-Man Wilhelms. J-Man only sent in one render, so there's, there's not a lot of work with here, mate, but I allowed this one onto the show because A, it began its life in Autodesk Inventor, which is always a cheesy bonus, and uh, B, it's quite the relevant and appropriate scene for card and drafting, and C, this turned into this. It's not flipping bad, mate. It isn't going to win any Oscars for best visual effects, but there's a couple of clever tricks deployed here which tickle my pickle. First of those being that this was done in RIP Autodesk Showcase. Press F to pay respects. Showcase was uh, was pretty dire and needed a lot of work before Autodesk ultimately pulled the plug last year, so anyone who managed to get a complete render out of Showcase before it donned its pipe and slippers and crashed out for a hearty nap deserves at least a nomination for that Oscar. But I'm also digging on that ruler under the paper, mate. I love that effect. Uh, it's a lovely little unique touch to the scene. The majority of the models here, uh, other than the pan feeder and drawing, are taken from GrabCAD, but his texturing of all the models across the board is pretty sound, it's in proportion, crisp, and he's done a sterling job with the ambient and ground shadows there, as it, uh, that, that was always a bit of a migraine in Showcase. The paper detailed drawing is wonderfully done with a Showcase decal, that came out lovely, and it's always uh, an impactful, interesting sight to see uh, like that 3D model placed against the 2D view, as demonstrated by the yellow pan feeder at the top left of the drawn sheet. J-Man did this render for his workstation desktop wallpaper for shits and gigs. It wasn't for production or sales, so the effort is even more admirable, but we can see a couple of areas which could have improved, likely though that they're just limitations of showcase, such as the ruler under the paper still being visible, represented by that kind of darker region and the unnatural fall off of the paper on the beveled edge. And the blue pen seems overly unnaturally prominent in the scene, but aside from that mate, hey, that's flipping quality for showcase, well done, and thanks J-Man for entering Render Wars. Uh, next, please. Next, please. We have Jeffrey Moe, who uh, also only sent in one render. Seriously, guys, you're killing me here. Actually, this one was done by one of his students, a young chipper named Kevin McConkey, who attends the prestigiously named Fairhaven High School for Visual Arts. What a name! Love that. Wish I had that on my CV. I went to Whitney Bay High School. Doesn't quite have the same flair. <laughs> Nevertheless, the creativity behind this is equally as impressive as the visual itself. Echoes of a fine key shot render, would you say? A product of Blender, perhaps? Uh, no. No, this was done in the, the pitifully flaccid floppy genitalia we've come to slap about known as Inventor Studio. In fact, Inventor Studio from about eight years ago, apparently. Yeah, no! <laughs> Rendered by a junior in high school with no post-processing. Uh, they didn't know how to properly add a background image, so it was done using some jiggery pokery and multiple test renders to get the position and placement right. Uh, knowing how much of a royal pain in the hoop that used to be, this is a sterling job, boys. Well done. I assume by now you've seen my tutorials on how to do that properly in Inventor Studio, so I suspect the world's your oyster now. <laughs> and as, as he says, they did this on a prehistoric relic known as a Pentium 4 processor, so by my calculations, this would have took around seven years to render. A plus for dedication to the cause. The model itself was built using individual Lego pieces between McConkie and his friend J-Man James. Uh, but aye man, this is mint. Knowing Inventor Studio like I do, I know that the lighting applied to the actual model is totally detached from the background. There's no interaction whatsoever between the background image and that model. So to use the dreadful standard lighting styles and match that with an appropriate and dare I say a dramatic background image and get it so right is a fine bit of work. Well done there. Uh, I'm a right sucker for a lightning scene as well, so honestly man, it matches the lighting applied to the model absolutely perfectly. And if you didn't know that they were totally separate, you just you just wouldn't have noticed. I love the angle on the aircraft as well, the kind of tilt and roll evasive stance like it's in the midst of a deadly Lego dogfight looks baller. Uh, you haven't gotten carried away either with an overly excessive field of view to the scene, so you've got that just right. 
Uh, not sure if it was intentional, but you've got a slight increase in exposure on the back end here, which gives the impression of it being lit by that lightning streak. Amazing job for an early studio render. I feel absolutely awful for levelling any critique on something that I know is, is genius given the circumstances, but uh, one thing I can say is the green ambience here from what I suspect is this fairly dimmed out green LED is a little off proportion. The red LED on the right side seems a little more convincing, but literally that, that's all I've got. This is one of my favourites so far because it's born out of an era where it was practically impossible to achieve a good render. So it's amazing job Kevin and James, thanks Jayman and Jeffrey for sending this in on their behalf. Descending in next with one of the best superhero Hollywood action names I ever done heard is J-Man Jack Lieber from the University of Bath. Good job. Good job we're not doing faculty name wars here because uh, Fairhaven Visual Arts is that one in the bag, mate, but I digress. It isn't. This is Render Wars and these, mate, are fire. With a good quality story to boot. These renders are done by J-Man Jack Lieber for, Lieber, Lieber, Lieber for Team Bath Racing, a combustion class formula student team, which is a design and business competition in which students from around the world compete in a series of design, business, costing and track events. Seriously, man, for f***'s sake, Whitney Bay High School didn't out like this. We had a football team and a group of radgies who waltzed around trying to mug people for their jackets. <laughs> team Bath Racing though appeared to be a kind of a big deal. They're one of the top UK teams and were the first UK team to win a Formula Student event outright at Formula Student Check 2016. Wow, rub that in my face, why don't you? And J-Man produced these renders for the UK competition back in July 2017, which allowed them to triumph for over 25 other universities. I'm not sure which CAD package the model was conceived in, possibly Blender, but J-Man did say that Blender was used to create the materials from maps made in Substance Painter to apply the logos and the colours. Amongst many other things, which are way above and beyond my level of intellect, the car is a full carbon fibre monocoque designed and made in-house. That's flippin' impressive. And it's got a turbocharged KTM 690cc single-cylinder engine, which no doubt guns like shit of a shiny polished shovel and clearly these renders are sweet some of these are pretty much bang on photorealistic the lighting and the scene texturing is beautiful uh, look at the carbon pattern man and the contours and that front splitter and how it interacts with the scene lighting the tires are on point he hasn't gone overboard with a shiny chrome or brushed aluminium which is quite easy to do when you've got bare exposed metal in a render i think we're at the level here where you just don't need me to point out how good these are you can see it for yourself uh, these chaps know exactly what they're doing and if you head on over to their face egg page or their other social media accounts be blinded by the mind-boggling jealousy inducing quantity of top tier sponsors they have I don't know about you, but I feel extremely stupid and unintelligent right now in the presence of these folk who have already achieved far more in life than I ever will and no doubt have a very bright and lucrative future ahead of them. So J-Man, Lieber, Lieber and Team Bath, your renders are undeniably deliciously tip-top and clearly they're just, just a tiny cog in a massive wheel of genius that you've got going on over there. Just looking at what you're doing, manufacturing carbon fiber monocoques, handling KTM engines, being sponsored by Ford, BP, Santander, clearly living the dream. I, 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 I hate you. I, I, I hate you. I hate you. I, I'm off to draft a strongly worded letter to Whitley Bay High School to complain about my youth and blame them for my underachieving in life. Uh, but thanks so much for entering Render Wars and good luck with the 2018 season and give me some credit at least for resisting the overwhelming urge to shower this segment in bath related puns. I, I really could have opened the taps there. <laughs> Shut up Neil. And propping up the list of J-Men it's J-Man Jason Cameron. Loved Avatar mate. Great film. Didn't care too much for Titanic but we all make mistakes. J-Man has done me a solid and sent in a plethora of renders ranging from wooden benches to CPU heat sinks. Bring it on then, let's see what the crack is. These buttes are all done and dusted using Autodesk Inventor, poor guy, but mate, these are legit. I didn't know how much I loved these model popping out of the paper visuals until I started seeing them in Render Wars, and I reckon we can all agree that J-Man has smashed it out of the park here. This is crispy AF, man, card on the table, I've no idea what it is, but you look like you know what you're doing. All the more impressive because it's all done in Inventor, not even Inventor Pudio. These are all screen snaps in canvas renders given that the triad is still visible down there at the bottom left. The oxidized texturing is perfectly scaled and skillfully varied so it doesn't look excessively tile pattern repeated. Uh, the paper drawn decal genuinely looks like a real plotted sheet. Uh, if I was into arbitrary meaningless scoring systems I'd give this a solid 9 out of 10. The only thing I'm not a fan of is the, the final draft company logo embossed that just looks a little out of place and too eye catching in what looks like the I think it's the default Tahoma inventor font uh, but that's your company logo so I kind of get it. I've also just noticed the possibly unintentional but very convincing dark to light worn effect on the bolt threads at the top there which kind of looks like the bolts have been actual screwed in place giving that shiny polished effect on the thread. If you didn't mean to do that mate just say you did and we all believe you. 
Uh, J Man sent in a stack of renders, all done in Vendor. I'll cycle through a couple of them now to try and show as many of them as I can. Some of them are what I'd classify at a stretch as being okay. Okay for a render, but I can appreciate and respect the complexity of the engineering and the modeling which went into them. Stopping for a quick second on this one here, which stands out. This one caught my eye. No idea what it is, mate. Possibly it's nothing and it's just a test, but it's very impressive for an inventor render. I think it's impressive anyway, as I'm not quite sure why the reflection of the circular opening on that sphere has went all wibbly wobbly and there's a distracting lack of refraction which should be present when viewing the inner sphere through the thick outer sphere but that's that's just invented <laughs> that's why it's invented Pudio and it's not very good but either way maybe it's just me being weird but I find this one oddly and confusingly satisfying to stare at it's a nice light stable style model here nicely put together the only subjective criticism I'd have for some of these is the slightly too enthusiastic overuse of ground reflections but that's that's just my thing I don't know I find ground reflections to be a distraction and an immersion killer for a render like this one here I love the heatsink and fan pun intended not a fan of the ground reflections same with this site layout here the modeling on display here is incredible the detail is next level but then ground reflections make it feel like a bit of a small scale plastic toy model that might just be me though they probably served a solid professional purpose so i don't know how much emphasis was placed on trying to achieve the photorealistic effect here's a good example of how the emission of ground reflections can make a hugely positive difference and again we can all stop and admire the modeling quality on display here j-man clearly proving he's a pro inventor user having used the program since day one the bloke got skills. So as we wrap up Render Wars episode 4, I'll leave you with a couple more entries from Jason, j and Cameron. Jason works for Final Draft Consulting based in Nova Scotia, Canada. So do check out his website if you're interested in sourcing said consulting services. And I thank you, j -Man, for your support for TFI and your wonderful entry into Render Wars. Reet petite, that's a wrap for episode 4. If you think you can do better, there's still time to submit an entry to be on the show. Link on how to do that is in the description of all Render Wars episodes. At this rate, we may finish the series by the turn of the next millennium, but you know, slow and steady wins the race. Click the voting link in the description, which takes you to my YouTube community tab with a one click voting solution. That went far better than using an external site, so thank you ever so much to everyone who voted in episode 3. On that note, if you enjoy TFI and you want to see me pump out more videos than I do right now, uh, please do consider consider supporting the channel on Patreon. I've got a couple of ideas on how to make that more worth your while, so I may knock up a video about that soon to get some feedback on the ideas that I've got. Stay tuned for that. But yeah, this is Render Wars Episode 4. I've been me, you've been you. I've never said that before and it felt weird. I've no idea where that came from. Anyway, toodles.